a couple of days ago, I put out this video talking about how I'm locking in on Zig going forward. One of the most common comments, or style of comments really, was why not my favorite language? Why not this other language that I think is really interesting? Why not Rust? Why not C? Why not C++? Why not Odin? So many different options. And um, <laughs> why not Nim was another one, which is uh, I find funny, but for an inside reason. I want to talk about those vid those comments today because I started writing out responses for people and then I realized it was going to be very duplicative and some people asked the same question like to a T, like why not C++ over and over again. Um, why not Rust was pretty common as well, but I just wanted to talk about that because I, I think that's an important thing to talk about. And before we get started, the key takeaway for this is really, really simple. It's my own choice. Rust is not better than Zig. Zig is not better than Rust. C++ is not better than Zig. Zig's not better than C++. My opinion may differ, but the reality of it is that I am biased in my choices, and this is why it's the right choice for me. You may think that my reasoning is not valid, and it might not be for you. Congratulations, that's how life works. Okay, cool, let's get into it. So yeah, without a doubt, the two most common ones were why not Rust and why not C++? So um, <laughs> why not Rust, right? So Rust is, Rust is a really excellent language. It gives you those airtight safety guarantees and those guarantees come with some friction, specifically the borrow checker. Uh, there's also heavier tooling that comes with it, generally a more complex language than Zig and a larger ecosystem that you must buy into, which, you know, has pros and cons. I wanna work with low-level programming without the gymnastics that come with the ownership model. And um, to be completely honest with you, I struggled to write Rust before I wrote Zig. And now that I've written so much Zig, I do feel like I could take the concepts I've learned and actually have a much better time writing Rust, but I, I just don't want to at this point. I would rather write Zig. I find it to be a more pleasurable language to work at. I like the explicitness of Zig. And additionally, um, comp time feels so much nicer than macros. In, in Rust in particular, but that's also a really good segue into C++. Uh, macros in C++ templates are awful in my opinion. Um, but in addition to that, C++ is this huge inconsistent behemoth that carries like uh, really decades of legacy. The language and the standard are extremely complex. The build systems are extremely painful. And Zig just tends to reject this complexity. There's no implicit behavior. There's no exceptions, which I have a lot of thoughts on exceptions in general. I think they're a really terrible practice. And like I mentioned, there's no templates as a meta programming type solution. And there's also no undefined... Um, overload resolution rules where you don't have to worry about overloading in Zig. So another question that came up was why not C? This is pretty similar to the C++ one. Um, C is gonna give you that full control, but it doesn't give you any help. And I like the help. With C, undefined behavior is everywhere. And the error handling story is weak, just like C++. I, again, I don't like exceptions. That's one thing I'll give Rust over those two is Rust's uh, errors as values is is much, much preferable to exceptions for me. And uh, honestly, I I can't really, I, I struggle to understand why people would want exceptions over errors as values. Um, my hunch is the people who want exceptions over errors as values have not been programming long, and they feel like errors as values get in the way, where exceptions are out of the way. They're out of sight, out of mind. And that also means that you generally don't handle them very well. Or new, de new devs, I should say, don't handle them very well. Another one was why not NIM? Uh, that one was brought up. I've been talking with a couple friends about NIM for a while now. It's an interesting language to me. I like that it is an abstraction over the compilation target. So you can compile NIM down to uh, C, or you can compile it to JavaScript, and I think they're working on Wasm. Um, Nim actually had my attention a long time ago, um, and this is maybe a little pedantic, all puns intended, or pydantic, I guess. Uh, but Nim 2.0 made a syntax sw switch, syntax swap, to be more Pythonic, and I cannot stand Python. 
Uh, I have a lot of reasons for that. Maybe that's a topic for another time. A really fun, long, deep dive fireside chat, maybe. But um, yeah, I can't stand Python. So the fact that it looks more like Python than before makes me not want to use it more than before. Uh, I have similar feelings about Scala 3 for what it's worth. I really liked Scala 2. It was one of my favorite languages. Scala 3 embraced this Pythonic style. And um, I do think that Scala 3 is probably a better version of Python, but it's still trying to be Pythonic, and I, I just don't like it. So, yeah, this brings us basically full circle. Uh, one more question was, why not closure? Um, I employability, I guess. I, the flip side is that Zig also doesn't seem super employable at the moment. So maybe that's a bad answer, a bad, a bad excuse, a bad response. But the fact of the matter is that with closure, I do feel like, um, I feel like I had a hard time finding closure jobs at the time. The world was different then. remote work wasn't as popular. Things may have changed, but also like, if that's my argument, I'm not looking for a zig job at the moment either. I'm happy where I'm at and I am um, learning zig and embracing it as something to make me a better developer. And I think really that's what it boils down to is I, I feel like zig is going to help me become a better version of myself before learning zig. And I've seen that too, right? Like I've been writing zig for about a year now, uh, off and on with other languages thrown in. The more I swap to other languages, the more I'm like, wow, I wish this was Zig that I was writing instead. Um, some exceptions apply. Results may vary. <laughs> Consult your doctor before swapping to Zig. So so why Zig, right? So I've mentioned this a little bit. I've hinted towards this, I should say. There's the explicitness and predictability you get um, with Zig. Almost nothing really happens behind your back. Everything is really right in front of you. There's no hidden allocations, no hidden coercions, no implicit control flow. Explicit is nice. I, I like that. You can interop with C, right? So one of the things I really liked about Closure was the adoption of Closure felt like it had a, a boon by being built on top of the JVM and having really good, really good Java interop. In Closure, any time you interop with Java, the Java code was, the interop was very obvious because it was doing things that like were not a Closure way to do things, but you could do it. This gives us access to the entire C ecosystem. I've done a video on interopping with C uh, using, uh, oh my gosh, not FFmpeg, my, my image magic. Sorry, my mind was blanking on what I ended up doing. Uh, yeah, so using image magic and orchestrating image magic from Zig to do some image manipulation. Um, and it, it works out really, really great. I also, this is maybe another pedantic excuse, reason, but um, Go has made me love the idea that there is a tool, one tool for everything, I should say. And Zig embraces that pretty well as, as well. So the Zig compiler is your build system. There's a formatter that's built into it. There's a package manager through Zig Fetch. Uh, it's got a cross compilation tool. And on top of that, cross-compiling is really a first-class feature, and it's not some hack that's thrown into the build system. I like having all these things together. Coming from the JavaScript ecosystem where I have to install a plethora of tools and make sure they all play well together, so like Prettier and ESLint and TS, uh, TypeScript and setting up my TS config and all of that works, but it starts to get weird when you wrap it all up in Webpack and Webpack is using Babel and you have to use the appropriate Babel plugin that matches the version of Webpack with the version of whatever plugin you're plugging into Babel and it's, it's, it's a nightmare. I hate it. It was literally one of the reasons that I stopped wanting to do front-end development. And I found Go and I was like, wow, this is so much better. And I've realized since that many languages are taking this approach, many modern languages. Dart does a really good job of this. Uh, Go, Rust, Zig, um, you know, there's a plethora of others. Uh, the memory management of Zig is manual, but it's structured, so you kind of get this weird mix between Rust and C in a bit of a way, in a bit of a weird way. Um, so you have that manual memory management you'd get of C, but you get some of the safety, some, not some of the safety, you get safety in a way that Rust is also providing safety. They're very different in the way that they provide safety. But with Zig, your allocations are explicit. They're testable. They're swappable. You can control 
really those allocations without seize foot guns, which is appealing to me. It should be appealing to a lot of people, I think. With Zig, there's also no hidden runtime, so it's easy to understand what your binary contains, how errors propagate, and really how to reason about performance. I mentioned this a little bit talking about Rust, but the metaprogramming in Zig is so simple. So Zig uses comp time, uh, execution of regular Zig code instead of C++ templates or Rust macros. It's powerful, but honestly, it's, it's also really straightforward. If you've not written a Rust macro before or a C++ template, I highly recommend trying it. It is a very wild experience compared to writing Rust or C++ respectively. And uh, if you write comp time in Zig and try to build something similar in comp time, I think you'll find a much more pleasurable experience. Lastly, with Zig, safety is opt-in, but it's not necessarily mandatory. You can add bounds checking, undefined behavior detection, and other runtime safety features without adopting a full Rust-like model. This is seen pretty heavily through the different release modes that Zig provides. So you can do a debug release, you can release fast, you can release small. You have a lot of different options and really safe is being the, the fourth one that I, I just omitted for some reason. But you get the flexibility to define how that works. And from the same code base, you can take different approaches. So if you're building locally, you might be building in a debug release mode to test things out. But when you're ready to ship things to customers and you you know things are proven to work, you might build in release fast or release small and ship that to customers or whoever is using your, your product or your code base. It doesn't necessarily have to be a product. That's really my feelings. Again, these are my own feelings. Everyone has different feelings for why they would want something, why they wouldn't want something, and it's really your worldview and your biases that lean you towards one of these topics over the other. Mine are leaning me towards Zig because the things that I value are also the things that Zig chooses to embrace. There are other languages that embrace some of those things. There are other languages that don't embrace any of those things. And, um, you know, it leans me more towards Zig than other languages. Hopefully this was helpful. I really love the questions, especially why choose something over something else. So feel free to ask any question like that anytime in the comments below, and I'll do my best to give you an answer. And if I can't write something in text because it ends up being too much to post on YouTube as a comment reply, you'll get a video out of it probably. No, no, no promises, but I'd like to. I think that's it. So thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. As always, I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a fantastic day.